something new recently. You know possums, right? Uh, when you think of possums, I'm sure you think of them as being pests. I know I did. But do you know that they're actually super helpful for us? They actually get rid of actual pests like rats and mice and cockroaches. They help to reduce the prevalence of Lyme disease by eating a good amount of ticks. It's cool, right? <sighs> Again, I'm sure when you think of possums, you don't think of them as being super helpful. You probably think of them playing dead late at night on a dark road when you're just trying to get home without hitting any animals. You know, when possums are playing dead, they're not purposefully playing dead. They enter into an involuntary catonic state in order to survive. What if I told you that possums and people were not all that different? Let me explain. This involuntary catonic state can be seen as dissociation in individuals. I should know, I am one of those people that experiences dissociation on a daily basis. Most people have no idea what goes on inside my head. They see a bubble, bubbly, happy, seemingly carefree person. What they don't see is the late nights of being sure I did not eat that chocolate bar, yet it's gone, and I live alone. What they don't see is losing time from classes, even though I attended every single lecture, I have to sit down for an exam and I know nothing about it. What they don't see is the late nights of waking up sweating, not sure if it's 2002 again and if I'm safe. Honestly, before I under understood dissociation better, I considered it a pest. The first time I realized something was wrong was my freshman year of college. My emotions were hard to manage and hard to identify. People told me that I had said or done something that I didn't remember saying or doing. I remember finding myself in the middle of a grocery store with no idea why I was there or how I got there. I pushed these all to the side as symptoms of stress. I didn't really believe in depression or anxiety, and I certainly didn't understand mental health at this point in time. I was sure I was stressed because it was my first year of college, and it was normal to have gaps in my memory. It was normal to feel like I was having an out-of-body experience at all times. You know, freshman year of college things, am I right? I sought treatment in 2016, and I was diagnosed with something called dissociative identity disorder, otherwise known as DID. I was also diagnosed with something called complex post-traumatic stress disorder, or CPTSD for short. DID is caused by overwhelming and continuous abuse during childhood, beginning before the age of six. The use of dissociation in childhood is a coping mechanism and a survival technique. According to the DSM-5, some symptoms of DID can include recurrent gaps in memory, the presence of at least two alters, and the use of dissociation as a way to escape upsetting or stressful situations. After I was diagnosed, I was confused. As far as I could remember, nothing traumatic had ever happened to me except for the typical in-school bullying and the casual fights everyone has with their parents. I had never heard of this disorder before, and now I had a name that explained all of my experiences. All of a sudden, I had alters introducing themselves to me. And they shared the traumas that they had held on to and hid from me in order to protect me. They wanted to survive. Slowly, with the help of a great treatment team, I was able to break down the flashbacks and body memories I had been experiencing. Gradually, I remembered the years of abuse at hands of family members. As far as I can remember, it started around age three and ended when I turned 16. I was turning 21 at this time, and I had a limited amount of time to report my abuse due to the laws in Michigan. I decided to report my abuser to the local authorities. He was brought in, and I was left to wait. My abuser failed his lie detector test. He walked in and out of the interrogation room several times, yet still was able to walk away with no prosecution whatsoever due to a quote-unquote lack of physical evidence. I started to spiral in and out of depressive episodes. I continued to lose time, and I continued to struggle with dissociation. I 
felt helpless and hopeless and let down by the world around me. Medical treatment left me feeling like a freak, and it left me with medical trauma that honestly made it hard for me to be honest with my treatment team. So many doctors that I talked to told me they did not believe in DID and that I must just be simply looking for attention. I sought treatment again, yet this time was met with a treatment that was actually beneficial. It was called recreational therapy. According to the American Therapeutic Recreation Association, or ATRA for short, recreational therapy is defined as the systematic process that utilizes recreation and activity-based interventions to address the assessed needs of individuals with illnesses and or disabling conditions as a means to psychological and physical health, recovery, and well-being. These recreational therapists asked me what, me, what I and my system enjoyed without judgment. I was able to identify what each part of me enjoyed and use that to better help me heal through art, music, humor, exercise, and more. Instead of treating me based on a diagnosis, I was treated as a whole person and as a whole system, which helped me break down and work on myself in creative ways that didn't leave me feeling further traumatized. Flash forward. I recently graduated from Grand Valley State University with a Bachelor of Science in Recreational Therapy. It took a very long time, but I'm here, and I am now a certified recreational therapist. I have had the privilege of researching dissociative disorders and complex trauma through the lens of someone who has experienced these symptoms and as someone who looks at the biopsychosocial factors rather than a diagnostic code. So far from my research, I found there is little to no research on DID, and there is basically no research utilizing recreational therapy as a treatment modality for dissociative disorders. I did find that a lot of people like to speak about DID specifically, but often for the wrong reasons. DID is either demonized or glorified, which definitely makes it an interesting topic especially for the media, unfortunately. I'm sure I'm not the first person to tell you this, but movies like Sybil and Split are not good representations of DID. My goal is to treat dissociative disorders through a non-judgmental lens. I began to ask myself, how can we help to reduce this negative stigma that lies behind dissociative disorders to better treat these individuals without leaving them with further trauma? The answer was clear, recreational therapy. This treatment modality, unlike others, focuses on increasing the individual's perceived quality of life rather than trying to find a cure for their illness or condition. My story is not the only story of its kind. From the short amount of time I've had the privilege to work in the mental health field, I have witnessed the effects of dissociation and trauma in other people's lives. I have witnessed mental health professionals discredit dissociation and further add to the negative stigma that lies behind these disorders. Whether they realize it or not, their words hold great weight. It's apparent that there's still flaws in our mental health system. So how can we help to support these individuals with DID and CPTSD? Let's start by treating them as people. Let's ask them what they enjoy. Let's ask how we can help through a non-judgmental lens. Let's start to create education based on how we as clinicians can better support these individuals without leaving them feeling judged. Let's stop playing dead. Let's stop focusing on what's wrong with people and start to celebrate the fact that they were able to survive and be here with us today. Let's stop seeing dissociation as a pest and start to recognize that dissociation is the reason why so many of our loved ones are still here with us today. Let's challenge this negative stigma that lies behind dissociative disorders and complex trauma by providing positive treatment modalities like recreational therapy that'll help increase quality of life. I would like to end with a quote by Maya Angelou as I believe she puts it best. You may write me down in history with your twisted, bitter lies. 
You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Thank you.